Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 143. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leveraged streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. My name is Jay, and I am your host today and excited because you guys know that being an entrepreneur has nothing to do with just being inside of real estate because we can create cash flow in many different ways. There's something about the entrepreneurial spirit that you are kind of born with, and it doesn't matter how tall, how short, male or female, black, white. The point is it's inside you. And when it's inside you, it grabs a hold of you and you turn that something into a great passion. Now, don't get me wrong. I say all the time that there are many different ways to go out there and create cash flow. And that's absolutely true. And you guys have met a number of successful entrepreneurs who are doing that in various different markets. But today, we get to talk about real estate and I'm kind of excited about it because you guys know that I like real estate of various types and kinds, and we've had the discussion many times about Walmart, Target, and Nordstrom-style real estate, and we don't get enough opportunity to talk about that high-end stuff that's beautiful, that looks great, that you've seen on TV, and I know some of you, I know some of you, you wonder, what does real estate in Orange County really, really look like? I mean, is it really that beautiful? Is it really that pretty? Who on earth could I talk to if that's something that I wanted to do in pursuit? Well, today's guest is Kristen Halton of the Halton Group, and what I'm excited about is that when you meet individuals in random, in the most random places, you find out that you have so much in common. You guys think I'm driven. Ah, eh, not quite. You think that I have a passion. No, not the same. She's completely different, but yet we're so much the same because we both love real estate, but what I love about her the most is that she's keen on tapping her potential and inspiring others to do the same thing. You guys know that you stay where you grow, and if you can build people, the people will help you build your business. And she's managed to build an incredible team out here in the Orange County area, and she didn't do it alone. Remember, teamwork is a fundamental necessary piece for entrepreneurship. So let's get to find out more about Ms. Kristen Halton. Kristen, you there? I am here. How are you today? I am fantastic. Thank you. This is good. Uh, you know, it's almost unfair to ask, you know, someone in Southern California, how's the weather, right? <laughs> <laughs> we Very all, unfair. We always have. It's always, it's pretty darn good all the time. Now we pay for it, but that's okay. Um, now, many of the listeners know the question I'm about to ask, but I, I want to just share it with you. I tend to think about today's entrepreneurs. And I think about today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes. You know, you got Wonder Woman, you got Superman and Batman and all these things. All of the superheroes of yesteryear, they fly around in capes, they dress up and they save people, change lives, all those types of things. And I think that's exactly what entrepreneurs do. However, before Batman was Batman, uh, before Superman was super, all of those individuals had a beginning. They had a story. They had an origin before they decided to be super. So what we really want to know is before you were out there working and serving clients in the real estate space, who is Kristen Halton? Well, that's, that's a, that's a loaded question, (laughs) but uh, a great question. I, you know, it starts obviously with my childhood and growing up, and I came from a very blue-collar, uh, hard-working family, and my father was a commercial fisherman, and my mother was worked at a dentist office, and from a very young age, I can remember 
something that really stands out to me is when um, I was helping my dad wash his car. Is that that's what blue collar people do? They wash their own cars. <laughs> right. Um, and we were detailing the tires, and my dad told me, and now I was doing it the way I thought it should be done. And he came over and he kneeled down next to me. And granted, I was maybe seven or eight. And he said, Kristen, this is how you do it. And he showed me very specifically how to, how to armor all the tire and clean the mags. And, and he said, if you're going to do something in life, do it right. Nice. And that was, you know, that clicked with me, you know, I'm 45 years old. And I remember that statement very clearly that moment to this day. And, um, and, you know, he also told me, you know, be your best at everything. You just do your best and give your best. And that's all you can do. And, and that's really my, um, my motto in life, you know, that and, and treat people the way that I want to be treated. And, you know, I always did my best and tried my best at everything that I've set out to do. And I think that's really where, where it all stems from. Indeed. Indeed. So when you, from that moment, uh, I can see how, you know, if, if you were ever wondering uh, out there, if your father makes an influence or you as a parent make an influence on your kids. I think we've, we've heard this many, many times on the show where someone mentions an, a pivotal moment that they had with a parent or a significant authority figure. I'm curious to know, because when you said commercial fisherman, that, is that, that wasn't in California, was it? No, I'm actually from Seattle, Washington. Ah. And, uh, yeah, I actually went, you know, at the age of 15, went commercial fishing with my dad in Alaska because I wow. wanted a car. And, you know, I was taught if you want something, you have to go out and earn it. And so I went fishing with him in Alaska at 15 and uh, went the whole summer and came back and, and bought my first car when I turned 16. <laughs> wow. Okay. So um, you were on the entire summer on a boat fishing. Yes. That's okay. How did you convince your mom to say yes to that? Oh, no. Trust me. My mom was like pushing me out the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Just, but my mom, you know, my mom was very, she was, they were very strict and she was hard on me as a child. And so I was, you know, taught at a very young age that uh, if I, if I want something, I need to go out and get it and make it happen. And, um, and so I did. Yeah, well, and and I think that sense of responsibility is something that a lot of entrepreneurs have, and I think that we all learn it in various different ways. So, was that experience on the commercial uh, boat the, your first experience in terms of uh, a job per se? No, I, um, you know, I it, I started this. I don't consider this a job, but I would sell campfire mints and. You know, even even doing that as a campfire girl, I would sell all of mine and sell all of my friends because they didn't feel like going and standing in front of the grocery store, going door to door. And I just, you know, again, sometimes and I like what you said in the beginning that you're just born with it. I really feel like I was born with this drive. And then, you know, really my father is the main one who who fostered that over the years. And so it was went from campfire to you know, I, my first job then was at Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> and then I went commercial fishing with my dad. And then I started working in fitness clubs. Huh. And by the age of 18, I was managing uh, my own health club. Actually, before that, I was 17. And I couldn't even sign the contracts, um, you know, to sign people up because I was in sales. And I was the highest you know, salesperson out of 13 <laughs> fitness clubs in Seattle, and I couldn't even sign the contract. So, um, so yeah, I, uh, and then from there I went to college and I went to Washington state university and in the summertime when I would come back, I would, um, run the fitness centers. And, uh, from that, uh, a company had heard about me, uh, called the fitness marketing group. And they, hired me and I would travel around the United States and go um, into a city and promote a fitness center. And usually these were the really high end fitness centers. I would go in and basically train the staff. I, you know, first I would sit down with the owner and find out, um, 
you know, where they needed help in their business. And, and mind you, I was maybe 21, 22 at this time and basically reorganized their whole system, run a big promotion. And, and oftentimes I would get, you know, the companies, the fitness centers back on their feet where they were actually making money. And I would be there for about 60 days and then I would go to the next city and do the same thing. Wow. So you're saying you're something uh, slacker. You just don't try to very hard at all. Is that yeah, it's big slacker. <laughs> right, right, right. Got it. All right. Underachiever. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see that. I can see that. So here's the here's a question. Um, most of your experience thus far, and this is exactly what I like about that transformation, there comes a point at which you, you've done a number of things for other people, but what was that? awakening moment that you know uh, that moment you were bit by that spider so to speak and you began to say you know what i can change and become something more than just an, a salesperson for someone else's business and i i need to do that what was that transformation process like and and how did you get to that spot well i can remember that exact moment as well i was in the last job i had with that company was in cincinnati ohio and um the owner of that fitness center, he, you know, that was going to be my last job. And he heard that I was, you know, going to move on and, and quit the company. So he hired me for six months to completely revamp his, his, um, his business. And so I was in Cincinnati, Ohio for six months, which turned into four years. Oh. Um, and, <laughs> And uh, I started, while I was there, I started my own fitness training business, and then I opened my own um, coffee drive through It was the first one in Cincinnati. Being from Seattle, Washington, I was missing good coffee, so I decided to open my own um, coffee shop. And I had done that for four years, and I met a guy, and I thought I was in love, so that's why I stayed in Cincinnati, even though I didn't like it at all. Um, and while I was um, there, you know, I the relationship was kind of going south and I came out to California for a little weekend getaway. And um, I came to Newport Beach, had never been here before, hadn't really heard of Newport Beach before being from Seattle, Washington. And when I traveled with my with my other company, it was usually mostly back east. And when I came out to California I literally rented a car from John Wayne Airport. I asked the rental car place, which way is the beach? Drove down <laughs> Jamboree onto Balboa Island. And for those of you that have been here, um, you know how beautiful it is. I got out of my car and looked around and said, this is where I want to live. <laughs> and um, basically went back and, and sold my business. And, and I sold it. And I, in the back of my mind, I thought I need to do something where I'm not trading my time for money. Mm -hmm. Because when I was meaning that each hour that I when I did fitness training, I was training a lot of pro athletes at the time, I worked for an hour, I got paid by the hour. And I wanted to get into something where um, you know, the possibilities were endless and the sky's the limit and I can make money while I'm sleeping. And I knew that what I was doing, uh, you know, was not the avenue at the time. And when I came, came out, I, like I said, I went back, sold my business, um, moved out to California by myself, didn't really know anybody and said, you know, I think I want to sell real estate, <laughs> not really knowing what <laughs> real estate was about, but always, um, loved architecture and loved homes. And so I got my license. I took a week crash course. This is back almost 15 years ago when you could do it in a week and, um, you know, applied to take my test. And within a month of, of moving out to California, I had my real estate license. <laughs> I absolutely love it. First of all, um, just so that everyone didn't miss that, when next time you are missing good coffee, the solution is clearly <laughs> just to open your own coffee shop. That's what you should do. It, just do that because that, <laughs> that that is that is not exactly the natural response. But I love it because you're you're a problem. You're like, hey, if I'm missing good coffee, I bet other people want good coffee too. So I love that. And yeah, it, and and the funny thing about that. So I was you know obviously into health and fitness. Uh, so we had this drive-through coffee shop and. um 
I, uh, the, also being into fitness, there was, wasn't a place in Cincinnati that made great protein shakes. So it was a coffee shop and protein shake drive through <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, if you can solve your own problem, you can solve problems for other people. But that's that I haven't seen that combination uh, since. Uh, So (laughs) but that's good. That's good. Now, I I know some of you, you you know, maybe you're you're, you know, those of you over in Germany or UK or Spain, etc. You you don't know what Newport Beach looks like. You don't know what Balboa Island looks like. It is beautiful. I've often said we live in a postcard. And it's true. Uh, this, this is, if you've ever seen shots uh, in a movie, it's probably these areas. And that's, so it's very clear and easy to see why she could get off the plane and go straight there and go, yeah, I, I want to live here. And I love that. But there's something that you illustrate in that story that I think is fundamental for entrepreneurs. And I'm just curious on your perspective. To be a successful entrepreneur, how necessary is it? Because there's two skill sets in particular that you've mentioned or at least demonstrated. How necessary is it for you to be able to make a decision and know that it, without having 100% of the information? Because you've done this a number of times. Um, that's a really good question. Some people might call it stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Because I don't really, if I, you know, I can make very quick decisions. And if I see something I like, I go for it. And, you know, at the same time, I can say it's a quick decision. However, it's really not. You know, I I have dreams and I have goals. And when I was living in Cincinnati during that time period, I knew that I wanted to get out of there. Um, I just had an extremely successful business and I was doing so well that I felt like I couldn't leave. Um, but in the back of my mind, I was looking for my next, you know, adventure. I was looking for my next, yeah, I wanted, I wanted to find a place to call home, um, and, you know, grow roots there. And so it was already, it, I had already started thinking about that when I came here. And so, so to some people, it might have seemed like a very quick decision, but I was already, you know, it was already in my thought process. Got it. Totally understood. Totally understood. And because it was there, you at least knew it when you saw it. It sounds like. Would that oh, be yeah. accurate? Got I it. recognize opportunity very clearly. <laughs> like <laughs> this is it. Yeah. Got <laughs> it. Got it. That's a but that's also a unique skill set that I think many entrepreneurs have because if you if you only go to school, get good grades and end up with a job, you're trained to recognize only one type of opportunity that is a job. You don't see how to see outside the box because again, not to beat a dead horse, but I have never heard of a coffee and protein shop, okay? So, or a protein shake, you know, that that's that's completely different, but you recognize there was a, a void in the marketplace and you were able to make that work. And you seem to have this way of finding those voids wherever they may be, yes. which I think is excellent. Now, the other skill set that you mentioned all the way back to the Campfire Girls, or yeah, Campfire Girls, was selling. So I'm curious to know, um, uh, two things really is one, um, sales in your opinion, how necessary is it, uh, for the entrepreneur, the one who actually is the owner or the, the, the driving force to be skilled at sales, or is that something you can outsource? Ah, uh, I think that, I think you could do both actually. However, in my opinion, the most successful entrepreneurs I know are gr- amazing salespeople um, because you have to start somewhere. And, and that is, you know, whether it be selling real estate, selling yourself, um, you know, to I'm constantly selling all day, every day. I mean, people want to, you know, work with me because of who I am and what I do, not necessarily what company I work for or, um, you know, what listings that I have. I think that, you know, the clients that I do work with, um, you know, want to work with me again, just because of who I am, what I do and, and my guiding principles in life. Um, that's what they tell me anyway. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> yes, it's always good to check to figure that out. And but I think you're you're hitting on something that's very very important. When we first start, it's just us. We're the one with the idea. We've got to give it birth so that others can catch that vision. And until they do, well, it's up to us. And in so many serious ways. So I guess then let, let's as we transition. Now you we're in California. You go okay. I know I'm going to do. Uh, I'm gonna go get my real estate license. So, why real estate? I guess is is I, I, it sounds like a crazy question coming from me, but I, I want everyone to know why you like the the why you decided real estate was where it is, at where it's at, and why it makes the most sense in your opinion. You know, I wish I had a, a really good answer for you, um, but the truth of the matter is kind of like being a natural born salesperson, I, it was just in me to sell real estate. And there's I, nobody, I, I, my parents weren't in real estate. I just had, it just, it appeared one day in front of me and I've always, I always loved homes. I love beauty. And I thought I'll sell real estate. It wasn't, it, you know, it wasn't anything more than that. And it just kind of happened. <laughs> I can relate because it I didn't wake up one day and go, hey, I can't wait to be a real estate investor. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh it it too just kind of happened. And then you learn about all of these benefits on the way through, and you're like, this is kind of cool. Uh this is really cool, in fact. And you get to meet some of the most interesting people uh in the real estate world. So let let's talk a little bit. Now, about the specifically what you guys do over there. Now, I know one of the things that I want to make sure that we we get a chance to share, because I remember when we were, I saw it on some of your marketing materials when we were at the the Wine and Cheese event. And for those of you who don't know, go to the website. There is a, a small little article. You can see there's a great little video of, of the Wine and Cheese event that where we met. And I saw this, the, your your mission statement and your guiding principles on your marketing materials. And I want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to hear that. Uh, but what I really would love to is tell us a little bit specifically about the Halton group, the types of real estate you guys do um, and, and where you guys specialize in. Are you tired of letting good cash flow generating ideas go to waste? Go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash ready to apply for a complimentary Yes, that means free, one-on-one -on -one breakthrough session. Take action now. Go to CashflowDiary.com forward slash ready. Again, that's CashflowDiary.com forward slash ready. Before we get back to today's episode of the Cashflow Diary podcast, your host, Jay Massey, has some important insights to share with you. All right, all right. So what I wanted to say is... You probably noticed that we're just talking to all kinds of entrepreneurs. Have you noticed just how many different places you can find them? We're all out there trying to do similar things. And are you taking notes on the things that are the same that you have to do no matter where we are? Hopefully you are. Hopefully you enjoy that. And that's probably one of the biggest things I think that we can all learn from one another. I mean, your business is probably different than mine and mine different than yours and the next person's, but yet we all have to do similar things, serve our customers, understand marketplaces, and, and find value <laughs> oftentimes where no one else is looking. Let's get back to it. Well, we specialize in Orange County. Our office is actually here in Newport Beach, right near Fashion Island. Um, for those of you who know where that is, it's um, we're literally a half a block from the ocean, and we sell you know high end real estate, and but we also sell you know condos from four hundred thousand dollars and up. So we 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 cover everything. And we'll help uh, anyone looking to buy or sell. And, um, you know, the mission statement, my team, there's uh, nine of us on the team. And I have basically handpicked everybody that is on my team because I, I liked them and I saw uh, great things in each person that is on my team. They are all extremely successful on their own. And, um, you know, I, it's my family. They are my work family. I love them. Um, we have an amazing synergy 
And we, you know, we love to help people buy and sell real estate. Every single person on my team is passionate about being their best. They're passionate about real estate and they're passionate about helping, you know, people live their dreams through real estate, whether it be helping them buying their dream home, investment properties, you know, downsizing, upsizing, whatever it is, um, we like to help our clients achieve their real estate goals. And my, our mission statement, I, it really is taking me um, probably about a month to really think about who I am and who the team is and what we stand for and what we do. And so I have a business coach that I've coached with for about 10 years. His name is Steve Scholl. And, uh, you know, one day we were on the phone and, and I was reading through my intro uh, that I will give people for a listing appointment. And he basically said, Kristen, that's all bullshit. <laughs> he said, tell me nice. who you really are. Who are you really? He goes, what you just read to me, anybody can say that. And it sounds like what everybody else says. He goes, who are you and what do you stand for and what is your team? And this is what I came up with. It's called the Halton Way. We are a team. We act as one. We work harder than anyone else. We take tremendous pride in the work we do. We do what we say. We say what we do. We sweat every detail. We are proactive. We are out-of-the-box thinkers. We are experts at connecting people, property, and possibility. We produce superior results for our clients. We do not stop until we get the job done. This is the Halton way. And I love the do not stop until uh, because that that's just one of the mantras of the entrepreneur. I mean, people ask all the time. How many calls do I have to make before I get my first deal? Or I guess in your case, agents are at, could could occasionally go. How many how many appointments am I going to have to do before I get my first listing? And it doesn't does it matter how many it, it, you work until. And it's good to know that you guys are out there doing work from that particular perspective because there's not enough people who work from that. You know, hey, it's five o'clock. It's time to quit. Uh, no, that's not no. how real estate is done. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so uh, I have a question because we get this from time to time, and I would love to hear it from your perspective. You mentioned that uh, some of your clients, I, I would assume, would do you're doing higher end real estate. So what would be your first of all low end price point and the high end price point? Our low end price point would be probably four hundred thousand. Although you know if we had a client contact us that wanted to you know, buy a condo for 200,000. I mean, we could find them one. Um, but on average, I would say it's 400,000 all the way up to, you know, 30 million. Got it. So yeah, yeah we were talking about a very <laughs> nice 14,000 square foot uh, estate and no guys, I'm not going to go there. Okay. So, but it was definitely something that, you know, intrigues my wife for sure. My question though, is the what would you say is for the ones that are buying the properties with you guys for an investment situation? Uh, are they primarily on the four hundred thousand dollars side, or do you have those individuals who are actually buying one million, two million, and up dollar properties as an investment? I would say most of the clients that we are currently working with, and and for the most part, overall, if they are investing, it's probably somewhere between one to two million. Excellent. And the question I know we get, but it's not the area of real estate that we tend to deal in. Uh, many of us, many people know that we tend to deal with the apartment complexes, commercial real estate, cell phone towers, and, and our resorts and things. But so I'm curious, from your perspective, what is why is that person buying a million to $2 million piece of real estate and using that as an investment? How do they actually use that as an investment from what, what are they telling you when, when that happens? Um, a lot of our clients own properties already in the area. And, you know, when they look at the stock market and they look at buying real estate, it's, it's a very, in their mind, a, a sure, a sure bet. And, um, you know, to buy real estate and own real estate in Newport beach, you know, California, it's a great investment and over time um, will appreciate. 
a lot of these investors, um, you know, are coming out of 1031 tax exchange. So they need to, you know, they have a time limit in which they can buy something. And, um, you know, for the most part, a lot of our clients are cash buyers or they put, you know, enough down to where the, the property would actually cash flow. And then you also have your handful investor of investors that want to buy something where they where they don't make money and they can use it as a write off. So there are, are many different uh, reasons that people invest in real estate. That's true. That's true. It's just I was specifically curious about the million dollar homes and the two million dollar homes and using them for that particular purpose. Now, I know for us, we see a significant uh, population of individuals from the UK, Germany and other countries actually wanting to invest in uh, what we do. And I was just curious if you guys are experiencing that similar thing where uh, non-U.S. citizens or uh, or people from abroad are actually wanting to participate in the real estate that you guys do as well. Absolutely. I mean, when we had our downturn, you know, the the theme that I would hear often is California is on sale. Um, but, you know, we we see a lot of, of buyers that are from overseas. And, you know, the bottom line is, you know, they see the pictures online. Um, it is a lifestyle that you're purchasing. It is absolutely gorgeous here. It's stunning. And it's like Disneyland. I mean, I love where I live. I am passionate about it. And it is, you know, I'm looking out my office right now at the ocean and the trees, the sun shining, the sky's blue and it's a great day. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful. We have some people listening who are probably experiencing some snow right now. Uh, and But that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. So you know, maybe that's, that's why you need to come out here and buy real estate. <laughs> I agree. I agree. My 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 mom uh, back in North Carolina, I will occasionally call her and ask her, so what was the weather today? And she goes, yeah, it was like, you know, it was kind of warm. I was like, okay, 30 degrees. I'm like, oh, that's, that's warm. Hmm. Yeah, no, you can keep that. I'll stay here, mom. <laughs> It is absolutely insane what we get to experience on a on a daily basis out here, and I love it. Now, just as a quick uh, update, for those of you who you heard Kristen talk about a 1031, a 1031 is very simple. Uh, it's a U.S.-based uh, a benefit, you could say, inside the tax code that allows us to defer those gains uh, that would, we would otherwise have to recognize or pay taxes on from selling uh, an asset in some way, say, shape, or form, in this case, real estate, uh, so that they can buy something bigger, better, nicer in that particular sense. So uh, I definitely uh, appreciate the fact that there are so many different ways to invest in real estate and that the the foreign community can uh, also invest in real estate. I guess, what would you say is your, what's like your number one type of uh, customer that you guys tend to work with that you have the absolute most success with though? I would say our number one customer is probably the age group between 35 and 55. Um, they're looking for a home uh, to live in, either full time. It's mostly full time, but some part time. Um, typically, they have you know f- family, children, and and they you know live and work in this area. So it's really just ha- helping you know families. Um, you know, buy and sell real estate. Got it. So in the time that you've been able to do real estate now is the, is this has been, it sounds like from the the story that you've given us, uh, doing real estate has been the thing you've done the longest. Is that accurate? Yes. So why stay? Because I love it. (laughs) I love coming (laughs) to work every day. I, love who I work with. I love where I work. I love what I do. Um, I love everything about it. And I think, you know, that's, I believe to be everybody's dream to love what you do and do what you love. And I get to do that every day. I mean, I'm living my dream. Well, and I, and that was kind of a setup question to get to the real question is because oftentimes as entrepreneurs, we are chasing the proverbial dollar. We're going, okay, I'm going to make money. And so I guess what I was really getting at is what, in your opinion, it, which of the two is more important? Because I get that you love what you do, but if something else 
that you don't necessarily love but could also earn money because you you know how to sell and we can sell anything we choose uh what do you think is more important loving what you do or or go chasing that dollar loving what you do why is that um Uh, okay, that's a good question. Uh, to me, it's just like a no-brainer uh, because it, it really comes down to what's most important to me. And money is not the most important thing. I mean, I love money; it's great, and I, you know, it gives me freedom and flexibility and choices. However, um, I, for me personally, and for other people, they might answer it differently. But I, you know, I. To me, loving what I do is is happiness. It's joy. It's um, it's being you know waking up every day with a smile on my face and being happy to go to work. I know so many people that are not, and you know, pretty much from eight to five or eight to six, Monday through Friday, it's a grind for them, and they don't like it. I could never, ever, ever do that. I could never, I could never work at something that I didn't enjoy. I know. I, I agreed 100%. And so what would you say to that individual or individuals listening who might find themselves in that particular position? They, they, but, cause they, see, there's something that you have that I don't think everybody uh, listening or even, you know, who is an entrepreneur understands that you can actually earn a decent living doing something that you love. You don't have to make an either or choice. So the question becomes is where did you get the courage to go and believe that, hey, I can do something I love and actually create a business and earn a a decent living doing it? Um, For me, I guess it is courage. However, I just wouldn't have it any other way. Um, <laughs> I like so, I like you because you're you're so clear. It's like that's just the way it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, that I, it, and it is. I, uh, I, you know, that it's it, that's just my answer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I I love it. You're only you you're just saying it in a different way. Is that I've often told people uh, that you once you have clarity, clarity leads to power. And that power you have is the power to decide and to act. And you act from such a clear space that there, of course, that's what I'm going to do. It's there's no other way. And I love it because there is no doubt within your mind. And, and I think you're portraying to everyone that this is who you must learn to become if you are going to go out there. But I, I have a question. Being a father of many daughters, uh, what would you say uh, is, because uh, I think personally, just so that you know, I think women have a huge advantage, uh, as uh, especially as salespeople, definitely as business owners, because you guys understand relationships and people in some extrasensory way that men can just not, they just don't. <laughs> I don't understand that. And you're excellent team builders period. You're just good at it. And I wish uh, I could somehow bottle that and learn it as well as, you know, I think you guys just get it naturally. And I think that's awesome. But I'm curious to know what other advantages do you believe you are afforded simply because of, uh, of, of those types of things? Um, you know, it, it, it's funny you say that because I just had another business owner at your, at the wine and cheese event, come up to me and he's a man and his wife is actually in business. She's an entrepreneur in the area. And he asked me, uh, if I felt that being a woman was, um, was, what's the word I'm looking for was, um, kind of puts me, you know, behind uh, a little bit compared to men and women. So it's all in your perspective, right? Indeed. Um, and he and his wife felt like, you know, she's dealing oftentimes with men and they don't give her respect and they think that she's less than. And so, um, you know, I, uh, as far as, you know, your, what you said about the fact that you have daughters, I have two daughters myself and honestly, I don't care if you're a man or a woman or, you know, 
for me, and I tell my five-year-old this all the time, I said, I, I, I tell her I love her every day, and I tell her that I believe in her, and that she can do anything she wants to do, and she can be anything that she wants to be, and I just want to instill in my children um, that belief, and that confidence, and that courage, and that they know that they have a mom that loves them, and will be there to support them, you know, whatever they decide to do and to be their best and do their best always. Indeed. Indeed. I I like it. I like it a lot. I I definitely uh, appreciate you. You have no idea. I run into so few people who are so clear, but being clear allows you to do so many things. And you're you're one of the (laughs) clearest individuals I've run into in quite some time. And I definitely appreciate it. And I hope everyone has uh, picked that up as well. Um, if someone listening right now wanted to find out more information, by the way, guys, you, 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 should, you should go find out more information. But if someone wanted to find out more information about some of the properties maybe you have listed or just kind of get an idea of what this uh, higher end real estate looks like in Orange County, what would be the best way for them to follow up with you guys? The best way would be to go to my website, which is thehaltongroup.com, H-A-L-T-O-N group.com, and then click on contact me and fill that form out, and um, I will be in touch with you. We are also on Facebook and Instagram, the Kristen Halton Group or Kristen Halton. You can find me on Facebook as well. Absolutely. I love it. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking the time uh, to, you know, invest here and just share a little bit about who you are, what you guys are out there doing, how you guys are uh, helping others create cash flow as well as creating cash flow for yourselves. I definitely appreciate uh, the investment that you have made here with us today. Absolutely. I appreciate it. And thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean? That means go to the website, the Kristen Halton Group, or sorry, thehaltongroup.com, and we're going to have the notes uh, for the links in the show notes, so you can go over to the website to uh, to pick that up. But most importantly, guys, take some action. If nothing else, when you go to that website and look at the photos, you are going to be blown away. These are the houses that we get to live near every day, and it's absolutely insane. If you ever wondered what these, who on earth would ever pay that much and why, when you look at them, you'll go, okay, it makes perfect sense because they're worth it, because the views are awesome. And when you look at the interior design, if you just don't go, man, that's from a magazine, now you know exactly what we're talking about. Anyway. It's been fun talking to you guys today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.